Welcome back. In this small section, we are going to cover SMB Ghost Windows 10 vulnerability. Since there is no module available for the Metasploit framework regarding this vulnerability, we are going to need to exploit it manually. And by manually, I mean we will have to find a working exploit ourselves, run it ourselves and redirect the connection to our Kalinux machine ourselves. All of these tasks Metasplint Framework did for us automatically and since we can't really rely on tools, we are going to learn through this Windows 10 vulnerability how we can do all of that ourselves. Now, the vulnerability that we are exploiting is rather new. I believe it got disclosed in June 2020 and for this we will need to install Windows 10 Virtual Machine. Not all versions are vulnerable since it got patched, so we will have to install a vulnerable version of Windows 10 machine. Since this as well is an SMB vulnerability, we won't need any additional software to run on our target machine for this exploit to work, which makes it even more dangerous, just like the previous two vulnerabilities, which were Eternal Blue and the Blue Keep, but they were attacking Windows 7. This one attacks Windows 10. All our target needs to have is port 445 open and some previous version of Windows 10. The exact vulnerable version that we are looking for is either Windows 10 1903 or Windows 10 1909. So you will need ISO file as usual to create this machine and both of these versions are vulnerable to the SMB ghost attack. Let me show you right now where we can download a previous version of Windows 10 ISO file. And by the way, we will be using this Windows machine in the next section as well to test the payloads that we will create. But more about that later on, for now on, let's focus on creating our virtual environment for this attack. So what you want to do first is you want to navigate to this rufus.ie website and this software right here that we're going to download is used to create bootable USB drives with the ISO files. Now, you might be asking, well, why are we going to need this? We're not going to boot into our computer over USB drive, we are installing a virtual machine. And that is true. But this software also offers us to download some previous versions of Windows 10 operating system. That's why you want to go down here, click on this Rufus 3.11 and download the file. It is the size of 1.1 megabyte. Once you download it, you should be having this file right here on the desktop. Double click on that file and it will ask for the administrator password. You want to click on yes or type in the password. And right here where we want to go is this arrow next to the select button. Now here's a small advice. Sometimes this arrow right here will not appear. And it actually didn't appear to me once I downloaded this software for the first time. So what I did is I tried restarting this program a several times. So just close this, open this again close it and open it again, that might work and what also might work is going right here to the application settings and changing this check for updates. Then click on close, restart the program and eventually this arrow right here should appear. Once it appears, click on it and click on download. And once you select the download, click on download once again and this will start running download script. In just a few seconds, you should have this small window pop up. Here we want to select what operating system we want to download. If I click on here, it will ask me if I want Windows 8 or Windows 10. I want to select Windows 10, click on continue. In the next step, it will ask me which exact release do I want to select. And right here, we want to go with this one, which is 19H1 build 18362. 356 and it says right here the date is 2019 September or 9th month. So click on this right here then click on continue. You can select Windows 10 home. Click on continue here as well. Language we can leave on English. And the last step which is architecture we can leave on x64. Then you can click on download right here or you can download using a browser. If you simply just click on download, it will open the file explorer and here you can pick where you want to save it on your desktop. 
Keep in mind that the size of the file is around 5 GB, so this will take some time. Since I already have it downloaded, I will not be downloading it again. For you, just wait for the download to finish and you should have a Windows 10 ISO file ready. Make sure that you pick the exact same version that I did right here. And once all of that is finished, you can close this program. The next step is to install Windows 10 Virtual Machine. So I already got one running right here. And for you, you can do it the same way that we did with any other machine. So just type Windows 10, select right here Microsoft Windows, Windows 10 64-bit, click on Next, choose 2 gigabytes of RAM or choose the same amount of RAM that you used for the Windows 7, click on Next. Here we want to create a virtual hard disk, all of these steps we can Next, Next, Next. Here I got 25 gigabytes in my case, and you can choose whatever you want right here and this will create your virtual machine. Now, since I already have it, I will delete it, but before I delete it, another two settings that you want to choose is as we did with the Windows 7 machine, under the storage, under the empty, you want to remove, and you want to add the Windows 10 ISO file, which I have right here. The next setting that you want to change is from NAT to bridged adapter. Once you do all of that, you can start the process of installing Windows 10. Now, there is not any important step in Windows 10 installation, so you can do it however you want. But just a pro tip, once it gets to the part where it asks you for the account creation, where you need to specify an email address and all of that, you can skip that part by unplugging your device from the internet. And then it will allow you to create an offline Windows account, so you won't need to create an email for the Windows 10 account. All of the other steps are not important, you can do them as you like, and once you do all of that, you can start your Windows 10 machine. Another thing that we need to do to get our Windows 10 machine fully ready for this attack is to disable the firewall. So go down here, type control panel, and the way we disable it on Windows 10 is the same way that we disable it on Windows 7. So click on control panel right here, click on system and security, click on Windows Defender Firewall, and turn it off in this button right here, which says turn Windows Defender Firewall on or off. Mine is currently off. Once you do that, everything is ready and you should be good to go for the next video where we are going to try to search for the exploit for this particular attack. See you in the next video.